Welcome to Hollywood Graveyard, where we set out to remember and celebrate the lives of those who lived to entertain us by visiting their final resting places. Today we're exploring Holy Cross Cemetery, where we'll find such stars as Bella Lugosi, Sharon Tate, Rita Hayworth, and many more. Join us, won't you? Holy Cross is a Catholic cemetery located in Culver City, California, just a few miles southwest of Hollywood. It was founded in 1939, and at over 200 acres, is the largest Catholic cemetery in Los Angeles. The grounds are beautified with ponds, statuary, and for my money, some of the loveliest and most interesting trees you'll ever see in a cemetery. There's also a majestic mausoleum, whose marble crypts mirror the stone sepulcher entombment of Christ himself. Here at Holy Cross, Mother Mary and all the saints watch over the dead. We'll begin our tour just to the left of the entrance, in an area known as the Grotto. This part of the cemetery features beautiful rock formations, a pond, and statues where the faithful can pray for the souls of their dearly departed. Just south of the Grotto, several spaces in from the road, we find Jack Haley. Vaudeville actor Jack Haley is best remembered for his portrayal of the Tin Man in the 1939 film The Wizard of Oz. The role went to him after the actor who was originally cast, Buddy Epson, suffered an allergic reaction to the metallic makeup. I'd be tender, I'd be gentle, and awful sentimental regarding love and art. I'd be friends with the sparrows and the boy who shoots the arrows if I only had a heart. A few rows straight up from Jack is Hollywood's most legendary vampire, Bela Lugosi. If Count Dracula is immortal, perhaps so too is the man who portrayed him. Hungarian-born actor Bela Lugosi's portrayal of the infamous Transylvanian vampire has come to define our modern perceptions of the vampire as both alluring and terrifying at once. He first appeared as the Count on stage in Broadway before taking on the role for the silver screen in Universal's 1931 production of Dracula. I am Dracula. Oh, it, it's really good to see you. I don't know what happened to the driver and my luggage and... Well, and with all this, I... I thought I was in the wrong place. I bid you welcome. Listen to them. Children of the night. What music they make. He died in 1956 and was buried wearing one of his Dracula capes. West on this same row is crooner Bing Crosby, whose silky baritone voice was a staple on radio and film, making him one of the best-selling recording artists of the 20th century. His biggest hit was Irving Berlin's White Christmas, which he premiered on a radio broadcast in 1941. The song resonated with war-weary servicemen abroad, painting comforting images of home and family during the holidays. The song remains the best-selling single of all time. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Let's head past the grotto to the area just west. Here we find Sharon Tate. She was a model and actress best known for films like Eye of the Devil and Valley of the Dolls, which earned her a Golden Globe nomination. Sadly though, her death often overshadows anything she accomplished in life. On the evening of August 8, 1969, followers of Charles Manson broke into her home and brutally attacked her and her companions. She was married to director Roman Polanski at the time, and was eight and a half months pregnant with their son. Sharon pleaded to be allowed to live long enough to give birth to her son, offering herself as a hostage, but the pleas fell on deaf ears, and she was mercilessly stabbed to death at just 26. Her son Richard was buried in her arms. Sharon's final film, 12 Plus One, was released after her death. Her mother and sister worked hard in the years that followed to transform her legacy from murder victim to a symbol of victims' rights, seeing to it that her murderers were never granted parole. 
West of Sharon's several rows is French actor Charles Boyer. He found his greatest success in the 30s and 40s in films like Gaslight, Algiers, and Love Affair. He was nominated for four Academy Awards in his career. His voice and mannerisms were also the inspiration for the Looney Tunes character, Pepe Le Pew. He committed suicide by second all overdose just before his 79th birthday. A few spaces further, right up against the wall, is Zesu Pitts. She was an actress and comedian from the silent era to the 60s, known for her timid and fidgety persona. Early in her career, she starred alongside Mary Pickford in The Little Princess. Here they are in a scene that may just have inspired Toy Story. Most notable performance is perhaps the 1924 silent epic Greed, considered one of the greatest films ever made. Her mannerisms are also the inspiration for the Popeye character Olive Oil. Heading back toward the grotto, there's a small lawn just past it on the left. Here we find one of Hollywood's most legendary beauties, Rita Hayworth. Born Margarita Cancino, she began her career as a dancer. By the 1940s, she had become Hollywood's most glamorous screen actress, and was one of the most popular pin-up girls for servicemen during World War II. Some of her best-known roles were in two of the era's iconic noir films, The Lady from Shanghai with Orson Welles and Gilda. Gilda, are you decent? Me? Sure, I'm decent. She also shone in the Technicolor musical Cover Girl. In 1949, she married Prince Ali Khan, making her Hollywood's first bona fide princess. Later in life, she suffered from Alzheimer's and became one of the early public faces of the disease, helping to raise awareness. A few spaces to the right is actress Bonita Granville. She was nominated for an Academy Award at the age of 13 for her role in These Three the youngest actress at the time to ever receive a nomination. She went on to play girl detective Nancy Drew in the 1930s. Later in life, she produced and acted in the TV series, Lassie. Rounding the corner to the north side of the grotto, we find a multi-talented Jimmy Durante. He was known as the Schnazola because of, well, he began his career in the 19-teens as a pianist, and soon became a popular musician, actor, and comedian on stage, radio, television, and film. He can be seen in films like It's a Mad, 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 Mad World, and had his own variety TV show in the 1950s. He also sang and narrated the classic Christmas cartoon, Frosty the Snowman. And as any child can tell you, there's a certain magic to the very first snow especially when it falls on the day before Christmas. For when the first snow is also a Christmas snow, <laughs> well, something wonderful is bound to happen. Frosty the snowman was a jolly happy soul with a corncup pipe and a button nose and two eyes made out of coal. Let's head into the lawn behind the grotto. Straight up several spaces from a white tree is actor Pat O'Brien. He was of Irish descent and often played Irish American characters. In the 1930s he was part of what Hollywood columnists dubbed the Irish Mafia with fellow Irish actors including James Cagney and Spencer Tracy. His films include Some Like It Hot, Newt Rockney All-American, and Angels with Dirty Faces co-starring James Cagney. One row east and just a few spaces up is actress Anne Miller. She began her career as a dancer, specifically tap dance. She was renowned for her speed. Her talents landed her roles in films like You Can't Take It With You and On The Town. 
She also found great success on Broadway in such productions as Mamie and Sugar Babies. Her final film appearance was in David Lynch's Mulholland Drive. Back one row and several more spaces north we find Jackie Coogan, an actor whose career spanned six decades. He is considered Hollywood's first child star after appearing in the Charlie Chaplin classic The Kid when he was six. In the years that followed, young Jackie was used not only to promote movies, but merchandise as well. From peanut butter to figurines, Jackie was a sensation. As a child star, it is estimated that he'd earned around three to four million dollars. But at the age of 21, when he went to claim his fortune, he discovered that it had been squandered by his mother and stepfather on extravagances like diamonds and cars. A legal battle with his parents ensued, and as a result, the California Child Actors Bill, known as Coogan's Law, was enacted in 1939 to protect the earnings of child actors. Later in life, he found success on television and will forever be remembered as Uncle Fester on the original Adams Family. <laughs> Your shawl on a broomstick, you can crawl on. We're gonna pay a call on the Adams family. Heading straight east, we reach a double row of grave markers. Here we find legendary actress Loretta Young. Her career began on screen as a child in small, uncredited roles in silent films like The Sheik. By the 1930s and 40s, she had become a leading lady in Hollywood, starring in such films as Come to the Stable and The Farmer's Daughter, which earned her an Oscar. In the 1950s, she moved to the relatively new medium of television, where she had her own anthology series, The Loretta Young Show, which became the longest-running network program hosted by a woman at the time. The role earned her three Emmys. Letter to Loretta, starring Loretta Young, Miss Loretta Young. Thank you for accepting my invitation to come back here again tonight. A&E described Loretta in their biography of her as a symbol of beauty, serenity, and grace. But behind the glamour and stardom is a woman of substance whose true beauty lies in her dedication to her family, her faith, and her quest to live life with a purpose. Finally, we take a long walk west. Partway down the hill, near the middle of the lawn, is Audrey Meadows. She was a popular television actress of the 1950s, starring as Alice Cramden on The Jackie Gleason Show and The Honeymooners. The role earned her an Emmy. You know something, right after you left the house this morning, I got in one of those silly moods of mine. You know how I get sometimes? So just for laughs, I thought, well, I'll do the breakfast dishes and make the bed and take the garbage down. Then when I came back up, I was still in such a funny mood. You know, I thought, why should I settle down to the drudgery of mending your socks? So I scrubbed the kitchen floor. Then, you know something, I was still so giddy and so gay over this whole thing that I thought I'd really enjoy myself, so I washed all the windows. <laughs> then, Ralph, I went out and I did the marketing, and I came back with a pot roast, and I put the pot roast on the stove, and while it was cooking, I went in and I cleaned out the bedroom closet. Now, I know that this may sound like work to you, Ralph, but it isn't. It's fun! <laughs> and that concludes our tour. What are some of your favorite memories of the stars we visited today? Share them in the comments below, and be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more famous grave tours. Thanks for watching, we'll see you on the next one. We've made a lot of animal friends during our wanderings through the graveyards. The deer at Forest Lawn, geese at Inglewood. Here at Holy Cross, it's turtles. So who's your favorite Hollywood turtle? The Ninja Turtles? Crush from Finding Nemo? Or how about Turtle Man? Are you a member of the Turtle Club? Well, not exactly. Not exactly, but am I not turtly enough for the turtle club? <laughs>